spend a few minutes reviewing some of the roles primary nutrients play in plant soil systems and plant metabolism. Nitrogen. As we touched on earlier, of all the elements or nutrients plants need for growth, nitrogen is needed in the largest quantity. In the turf and ornamental world, nitrogen is most often associated with healthy shoot growth. Nitrogen is an important component of amino acids, proteins, DNA, and countless other organic molecules, not just in plants, but in all organisms. Without nitrogen, life would not be possible. In nature, soil bacteria fix nitrogen gas from the air and convert it into ammonium and or nitrate. These are the only two forms of nitrogen that plants can take up. Now here's an interesting fact. Even though most of the nitrogen in a bag of fertilizer comes from urea, plants can't actually use nitrogen in urea form. In fact, plants rely on soil bacteria to digest and convert urea into ammonium and nitrate, which again, are the only two forms of nitrogen that plants can use. It's important to note that if nitrogen is accidentally overapplied or spilled onto the ground, it can significantly raise the pH of the soil, resulting in plant or soil burning. And if this occurs, just sweep up the fertilizer or flush the soil with significant quantities of water so the fertilizer dissolves and washes out of the root zone. Since we're talking about nitrogen, let's take a few minutes to talk about slow or controlled release fertilizers. One of the physical attributes of urea is that it is 100% soluble, which means it readily dissolves in water. Because of this, urea nitrogen is considered to be immediately available or immediately released. The fact that urea dissolves so quickly means soil bacteria can quickly convert it into ammonium or nitrate, and plants can quickly take up those nitrogen sources, resulting in a quick green up. Unfortunately, plants can only take up so much nitrogen at a time. When excess ammonium sits in the ground, other soil bacteria can get to it before plants can. Those bacteria can convert ammonium into ammonia. That's a gas which can become lost in the atmosphere. This problem is called volatilization. Now when excess nitrate sits in the ground, there's a good chance much of it will wash out of the root zone during a rain event. This is because nitrates are very soluble. This problem is called leaching. In an effort to reduce volatilization and leaching, the industry developed slow or controlled release nitrogen. Slow or controlled release nitrogen is essentially a urea granule that has been coated or encapsulated by a polymer, sulfur, wax, or any combination thereof. These layers work together to slow the release of nitrogen into the ground. That way nitrogen-based fertilizers last much longer than only a few days in the soil. The encapsulated barrier slows the rate of water absorption into the granule and slows the rate at which dissolved urea can leave the granule. The rate at which dissolved urea leaves encapsulated granules is called the dissolution rate. Polymer-coated urea, sulfur-coated urea, and polymer-sulfur-coated urea are all examples of slow or controlled release nitrogen, and each has a unique dissolution rate. Let's take a look at a diagram of a polymer-sulfur-coated urea granule. Note that at the center of the granule is a urea core, followed by a thin polymer layer, then a thick sulfur layer, and finally, a thin outer wax layer. Now let's take a look at this product's dissolution rate curve. Note that about 17% of the nitrogen is depleted upon spreading and watering this product into the ground. About 18 days after applying this product, about 50% of the nitrogen has been depleted, and by day 49, about 87% of this product has been depleted. Also note that the curve is leveling off with time. Control or slow-release nitrogen products can last anywhere from 30 days all the way up to 180 days. Longer lasting products have thicker polymer, sulfur, and wax layers, and not surprisingly, are more expensive. One other benefit to slower control release nitrogen products is that they help prevent the chance of burning your turf should you accidentally over apply. Almost all specialty turf fertilizers have a mix of immediate release urea and slow or controlled release urea inside their blends. Phosphorus. Phosphorus is most needed by plants during times of rapid cell division and is often associated with healthy root growth. In the turf industry, you'll notice that most specialty fertilizers are phosphorus free. This is for two reasons. First, most soils where turf are grown are already abundant in phosphorus. And second, phosphorus and fertilizer runoff can lead to eutrophication of streams, rivers, and lakes. Eutrophication is the technical name for toxic algal blooms, which can contaminate waterways and pose serious health risks. 
The problem of eutrophication has led some states and counties to enforce blackout periods, which at certain times of the year is against the law to apply specialty fertilizers. For these reasons, phosphorus is usually only found in starter and general purpose fertilizers. Be sure to check your state and county ordinances for rules and regulations regarding when you can and can't apply phosphorus, as well as nitrogen, and how much you can apply annually. Potassium. Of the three primary nutrients, potassium is needed in the smallest quantity. However, potassium's role in plant systems is critical. Potassium is most often associated with helping turf and other plants cope with abiotic stresses, such as cold stress and drought stress. Potassium has a direct influence over a plant's ability to respire and protect its water content by regulating the opening and closing of guard cells located on stomates. Stomates are tiny openings on plant leaves and tissue where respiration takes place. Remember, for plants to take up any nutrient, that nutrient must be soluble, meaning it can be dissolved in water. Plants move dissolved nutrients to where they are needed through vascular tissues called xylem. This entire process takes place thanks to a principle called evapotranspiration. As water molecules evaporate and exit through the plant's stomates, a continuous chain of water and dissolved nutrients moves upward through the plant. The reason many plants close their stomates during the day is they don't want to desiccate or dry out under the hot sun. At night, the stomates open back up and allow for maximum air exchange and nutrient transport. Without potassium, this complex process would not be possible.